Welcome to Kitchen 143. I am your host, Michelle Aventajado, and I am excited to share some of the things that I love while we spend time together here in the kitchen. Recent events have got me thinking. We're going to be making some crucial choices and decisions for our country quite soon. And they've also brought pride to the Philippines, of course, both Filipinos abroad and here at home. Well, in this episode, we're going to focus on a product that has gotten acclaim both abroad and here as well, Don Papa Rum. In the past, we've talked about Scotch whiskey. This time here in Kitchen 4-3, we'll show how our Filipino rum can fit into our everyday culinary tastes. Dishes and cocktails in this episode have all got a little bit of Don Papa in them. And yes, we got very creative with the rum in our kitchen. Joining me today first, we have Bianca Santiago Reynoso, who is a good friend of mine and of course, a proud mom of two. And we also have Aaron Goodall. He's the brand ambassador for Don Papa Rum and he's gonna educate us about the rich heritage surrounding this product. And of course, joining us again is mixologist Kath Eckstein. She guested with us before for the whiskey episode, and this time she's going to whip up some cocktails with the Don Papa rum, and we'll get to that later. Okay, as always, guys, be sure to watch out for the quiz, the cook questions. You know five winners will take home all of the prizes for today. And of course, they include bottles of Don Papa rum, both the seven-year and the mascara, honey cured bacon, Hungarian sausage, and a Brazilian ribeye from Steak & Co. We also have an alcoholic or a boozy Sunday kit from Tipsy Cream Manila. I'm really excited to try that. It's come, it comes with a plant-based coconut ice cream um, and also some confectionaries like rum raisins, brandy bar nuts, whiskey granola, bourbon molasses, and whiskey fudge. I'm excited to try that one too. And of course, we'll also get a bar jigger from Bar Smith. So guys, tune in. You know we're broadcasting live on Rappler's YouTube, Facebook page, and Twitter. And we're also on the Mama and Manila face Facebook page as well. Tell us where you're signing in from. We want to see where you guys are coming in from. Okay, so we see we have some of our friends coming from all over the metro. Um, let's start with Bianca. Hi, Bianca. How are you, my friend? Hi, Mish. Super nice to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You're after Kitchen 143. I am so excited to drink and eat this afternoon. <laughs> we're going to taste and we're going to drink. And of course, we're going to make Chico while we hang out here in the kitchen. How, I mean, we, we're we all, three of us are moms here on the, the call, right? Um, how has it been for you juggling parenting and then, of course, working and online distance learning? Our kids go to the same schools, right? Um, how has it been for you recently, right? Who's going to go first? You want Kat to go first? <laughs> sure. Kat can go first and then you can. <laughs> Sorry, Kat. <laughs> well, you know, I think that a lot of moms, we all have, we all share the same anxieties that's been going going on. And we really do try our best. And sometimes, you know, our best can you know, we can help being our best with maybe a little bit of tipple once in a while. It does help, you know, just to relax when the kids are asleep. And then I always like to say, when mommy's happy, the whole house is happy. So I agree. Yeah. And I find myself, you know, enjoying cooking more and spending time with my family more at right. when, when he's relaxed. So, yeah. What right. about you? Yeah, how so about you? <laughs> you threw the question to her. Your turn. <laughs> I know. I just had to be sure because I wanted to gauge if Kat was going to say, I'm going crazy. I need a drink or... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but I'll be real. It's been tough. Definitely. I have young kids. Mish knows this. I have a six and an eight year old. So the homeschooling, the distance learning setup is quite challenging because, um, well, this is the this is cycle two as we call it right. This is cycle two. Yes. This kind of school year, it's way better. But 
of course, it's still demanding in that sense. Like what Mish mentioned a while ago, um, it's really just how finding how to balance everything from work, from your self care as a mom. I like what Kat said that happy wife, happy life, happy mom is a happy home. Yes. And, um, right. And um, actually, it's basically that finding what I should be prioritizing first so that I won't get rattled or I won't get overwhelmed in a day yet. So it's, um, I'm just trying to breathe through it and go through it. And um, instead of looking at it as a stressful situation, I, I'm i just grateful. I'm grateful that I am with my kids. I am seeing them grow up because I know I've been posting this on my Instagram and I take a look at the pictures of my kids. Wow. Like my daughter is shooting up. Like she's so tall now. And like last year, she wasn't even my husband's shoulders but now she's i think way past the show so it's like everything's going by way so fast so this is quality time for me in spite of the extra added workload for as a mom yeah i love that actually you're you you mentioned earlier grateful that you're just like so grateful through all the challenges and i have to say your posts are giving me all the feels with like the Aww. kids and their crushes and how small they were seeing baby wano and baby yeah. liana to now like big girl liana right so exactly. way to remain grateful um uh aaron how have you been coping <laughs> good afternoon uh well, I've been coping pretty well, actually. Um, hosting sessions such as these with tasting the rums and sort of sharing the love of Dom Papa. So um, it, it has been tough not being able to go to, to restaurants or bars like we used to. Right. But uh, getting to connect with people online instead has been a, a great way to sort of pass the time as well. And uh, yes. I think you mentioned it yesterday, sort of uh, I've become quite the plantito as well. So well, I don't have any <laughs> young ones yet, I've got the plants to look after. <laughs> yes, yes. And I like your background there. I like that you have all the plants there. Very homey. And of course, I can't do that myself because I tend to kill the plants a little bit. So, so I choose something that I'll, I'll stay in the kitchen rather. So, okay. Um, we know that it's been challenging, but we also know we're finding the silver lining through all of it. Um, Bianca, you're also a former stylist, a fashion editor. Now, of course, using your social media to share these passions, your family, the fashion, style, fitness, home, travel, of course. And this is to empower and inspire your followers, your friends, and everyone who, of course, the community that we are all a part of. Um, how do you and Raul choose to unwind? Because I will say, not that it's there's anything wrong with it. Nino and I, you know, on Friday night, we will have a drink. We'll have, you know, a glass of wine or a glass of rum or even a glass of whiskey um, after dinner and, you know, sit and take it in. And it's okay. So, you know, is that something that you and Raul enjoy? Of course. <laughs> I'm not even going to deny it. We Even since before the pandemic, that's how my husband and I, really relax we go on dates and even if we're just at home right now we try to find pockets of time to maybe have a glass or you know parang what we've been doing is we we keep finding we keep trying to find those online concerts and book buy a ticket and like you know set up the sala while our kids are watching tv endlessly in the room as long as mom and dad has their own time so we we try to save that during the weekends we try to find ways to entertain ourselves even we're just at home right now no? and um another bonding that my husband and i do now it's really quite funny because it's the opposite of drinking it's working out yeah, so i know yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> i don't really know what's happening but um yeah i'm into weightlifting crossfit with my husband i didn't i actually until now so don't know how he got me into doing it but it's quite addicting i love it yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're doing that. And actually, Nino said to me the other day, dude, did you see Bianca doing burpees? We need to like do some workout. He's like, we need to get on that. What are you doing? I'm like, okay, pass, pass the rice. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I, one day, I, I don't know if, I don't know if CrossFit is for me, but um, definitely I need to get back to working out because it makes me feel good. So we do have um, Aaron on the call to teach us about rum for when we do unwind, right? Um, Aaron is going to 
demystify the process for us. But before I give it over to Aaron, I want to kind of say hello to everybody. So Raul is watching. Your ex-boyfriend is watching. You say hello. Hi. And then, of course, we have Paui. Hi, Paui Batanga. Um, Charmaine said she's sharing the live stream. Guys, you know that if you want to be part of um, the the... I guess the people who love to win and take home some of the loot that we're going to also be sharing and uh, tasting with you guys on cam, you have to make sure you share the live stream. So make sure you do that. We have Jing who's also here. We have people from Mandaluyong also signing in. So hello everyone. Hi Kay, thanks for joining us again. We have Kay Garcia who signed in. So many, so many of our friends. Signing in. Of course, they want to learn about RUM. Erin, can you tell us, you know, RUM 101, share um, about Don Papa, um, uh, how RUM is distilled, um, and then we'll get to, of course, uh, food tasting after you tell us about how RUM and Don Papa is made. Maybe even a little bit about Don Papa's history, too. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a, a great place to sort of start with it and how Don Papa came about. Uh, well, over the last 10 to 15 years around the world, we've sort of seen this rise in premium spirits brands, uh, really driven by the growth in consumer knowledge. So whether it's yourself hosting classes like this, learning about whiskey as well, we've seen these brands take, take hold around the world. And um, we, we found an opportunity to have that sort of premium, super premium rum brand here on the market, as well as overseas. And for our founders, having sort of that connection to local sugarcane and the rich history of the Philippines was uh, an added bonus that really helped to build the foundations. So we, we launched the brand back in 2012 uh, with our Don Papa Rum, which we'll be trying, I think, second in the session today. And then since then, over the last nine years, we've grown in leaps and bounds. We're available in over 37 countries around the world now. Uh, and here in the Philippines, we've actually just launched our eighth, our eighth expression uh, a few weeks ago, which is our Don Papa port casks finish. So uh, we've, been, we've been keeping busy over the last few years. Um, getting into rum itself, uh, rum has this really sort of, well, sugarcane itself, so the, the base, spirit, uh, base ingredient for creating rums, has this rich history back here in the Philippines. Um, it's dated back hundreds of years. It sort of started in Papua New Guinea before transporting up here into Indonesia, um, eventually getting transported during the galleon trade. Um, and for ourselves, we use a particular variety on Negros Island called the Kanya Marada, uh, which mm. is sort of our, our go-to sugarcane for creating our Don Papa rums. So I saw a little little chart there that sort of showed the the steps that go into how our rum is made. So looking at this here, it's sort of a seven step process, starting with that harvest of the sugarcane on Negros Island. Um, this takes place around this time of year in October, and it can go up until May or June of the following year. And on, on Negros as well, they still sort of hand cut the sugarcane, ensuring that the sort of the richness of the of the stalks themselves stay as whole as possible uh, before being transported on carabaos and trucks to the second stage, which is the sugar milling process. So here there's these very classic mills that date back to the 1920s and 1930s to squeeze out the juice from the sugarcane. Uh, and then it goes through that cooking process to create your sugars. So mm. whether it's a, a crystallized sugar or a muscovado, we right. end up with this, this byproduct, which is important for rum making, and that's the molasses. Right. Um, and, yeah. So because of the, the great sugar cane on Negros Island, the, the harvesting and milling processes as well, we have this local nickname of this uh, special black gold molasses, which we then take to the next step, uh, which is our third step and fermenting. So you sort of mentioned this in your whiskey class as well, uh, where we'll add yeast and water to start this fermentation process. This sort of allows the flavors to develop in the liquid before it becomes the rum. So we'll get a lot of our congeners, which um, will then develop uh, once we start that distillation process. 
So right. for ourselves, this is a, a three-day process, a 72-hour process, so quite a bit of time. Um, and then from there, we can really start that distillation as well. Right. So that's step four. Step four is the distillation. So we use column stills in Negros to create our rums. Uh, this ensures, uh, so on that, on that photo there, that's actually the classic sort of pot still, uh, which is your more English style of rums. We'll use mm -hmm. a still like this. Um, okay. And that leads to slightly funkier flavors in your rum. For ourselves, we use a column still, so a big tower uh, that creates okay. sort of a cleaner profile to the rum, uh, but allows us to remove any of those impurities as well, a lot easier than with a pot still. Any questions so far? I, it's quite a lot of information. Uh, well, for you I, I was I was thinking actually I read something about the distilling process, right? So during the distilling process is when this is when the alcohol um, starts. If the 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 BAV is much lower, the distilling is where it becomes higher. Correct? Yes. Yes. And so then during this process, because it's a column still, I also read that so much of the alcohol so much of the liquid evaporates so that by the time we actually get the seven the seven year bottle to get this bottle it's actually this is like 50 percent only of what the other 50 percent evaporated am i am i am i did i understand that correctly when i read it you've got the facts right but uh, just it's in a different later step for the evaporation okay okay so okay okay so after after the fermentation, you'll have uh, ABV or alcohol volume content there of ABV. around eight or nine yes. percent, uh, and then the distillation takes place. So distillation will uh, evaporate the alcohols from that liquid, um, and then recondense as the as the new make spirit or our unaged rum. Right. So this comes off of the still. If you think of, of just sort of the world of spirits, we usually drink around, I don't know, high 30s, 40% range. Our, okay. our new make spirit comes off the still at 93.6% ABV, I think. So really, really high. Um, really? Yeah. Really so high. <laughs> we'll, we'll dilute this down um, using spring water uh, before we start that aging process. Um, right. Bringing it down to around 60% before we do the aging. So there you go. Uh, then once we reach the aging, we pop the, the liquid into our barrel. So stage five. And this is where that that uh, evaporation will tend to take place. Right. Okay. So, so I had it our cells at, at Don Papa Rum, we use two main style casks to age our Don Papa. Uh, we use both are American oak, but one is ex bourbon casks. So American whiskey casks that can only be used once then we'll age our rum in this. And the second style is usually found in scotch making. It's called an STR cask or a shaved, toasted and roasted cask. Oh, uh, yeah, I read about that. So these are American oak as well, but were previously ex Rioja cask, so a Spanish okay. wine cask. Okay. And these will add some nice fruitier flavors to the rum as well. I think I also, is that why it's also so strong in the vanilla taste as well from the, the toasted so, and the roasted? So the vanilla notes you usually find from the bourbon casks. So mm -hmm. bourbon is known for adding sort of this quite vanilla flavor to liquids that age in the casks afterwards, um, as well as the American oak as well. So that sort of gives that uplift in flavor and uh, sort of the beautiful color you get to the rum as well. Yeah. So that's yeah. From, from that aging process. Awesome. So you, you did mention um, the evaporation, which is a, a phenomenon known as the angel share. And yeah. it just sort of happens naturally with aging spirits. So right. for ourselves here in the Philippines with such like the tropical climate and the heat and humidity, mm -hmm. um, these barrels just sitting in the warehouses over time will, will start to lose some of the liquid. Like the wood will heat up and expand, and then when the temperature cools, it'll contract. So over time, we'll lose some of these liquids. And the temperature here causes an evaporation of around uh, 8 to 12% per year. Per year. So as you were mentioning, yeah. yes, as you are mentioning, like looking at our Dom Papa there, we end up losing around half of that barrel through that aging process, which is pretty crazy. 
Yeah, I love this label. And I love that, of course, guys, everything, it's Filipino made, Filipino designed, right? Um, even, uh, even where it's from, Aaron, you mentioned Negros. There's a special nickname for the area where this is made. Yes, so, well, we've got quite a few elements that go into creating like the, the inspiration for Don Papa Rum. Uh, so Negros, of course, being the home of where we do our, our sugarcane uh, farming and distilling. Um, but then looking at the history as well. In the middle of the island, you've got the mighty Mount Ganlaon. So still a very much active volcano, uh, yeah. but it also adds to sort of the, the richness of the soil that then the sugarcane grows in. Um, but looking at the history of Negros, you also have this figure, uh, um, Dionisio Magbuelas, or Papa Isio, who is a freedom fighter, who helped the Negrenses in their fight for independence from the Spanish back in yeah. the 1890s. And Papa Isio. We're, we're, we're inspired by him with, with that character and with Don Papa, the name itself. Um, and as you can see there, we've got these wonderful creatures of Sugarlandia on the label. And there's a rumor going around that apparently on that label, there is something like 51 creatures of Sugarlandia. Um, I am yet to find all 51, but okay. I, ha I had a little I, count earlier. I, I think I found 26. 26 Actually. of 51. That's pretty good. I don't know if we found that many. Of course, <laughs> we know the Tarsier is there. Um, and Sugarlandia, oh, we also have the Tarsier. I love this little tasting glass that we have. Bianca was using it earlier. So fun. Our little mammal. There we go. Kat, how many, how many animals did you, uh, you had to try uh, this before, right? Yes. So, you know, I've, I've worked with Don Papa before and uh, every event, you know, every, every time I have another event, I'm like, oh, I found another one. Or every time I've had another glass, I'm like, oh, I found another one. Or it could be those. <laughs> but uh, I, think I've reached, I think I've reached 27. That's my, that's my best that's count. My best best count. Best yeah. <laughs> that's way more than that's way more than us. I don't think we found that many. So you found Aaron found 21, you said 21 and 27, Kat? 25 and 27, right? 27, yes. And all from <laughs> and the animals are all from Sugarlandia, which is, of course is also known as it's the nickname for Negros in this as we talk about where the rum is made and everything. So guys, are you ready for um, one of the recipes that we have made actually. So this is a recipe that I'd like to share. We use the, actually use both the rums in this dish. Um, and I'll walk you through how we made it, but I'm gonna show you how we made some spicy um, pineapple rum glazed bacon. So we started with Steak & Co. Honey Glazed Bacon, which is a little bit thicker. Um, it stands the, you know, it can stand the marination and the baking. And honestly, since we've been in quarantine, I, I no longer fry bacon. I just bake it. <laughs> so I started with marinating the bacon with the seven year. And then I made my barbecue sauce. So I let the bacon sit for about 30 minutes in the seven year rum. Um, right away, you can smell um, the vanilla. I'm, I, I was really so amused that the rum had such a strong um, scent that way, the strong nose that way. In the barbecue sauce, always equal parts, sweetener, um, ketchup and vinegar. Uh, so you can use apple cider vinegar. I use straight up white vinegar because we use the crushed pineapple. And in the sauce, I put the mascara and I also added um, some ceiling labuyo, which is also in the mascara um, blend as well. After the bacon has been marinated for 30 minutes, I throw it on um, the rack. I just love how much easier it is. There's no splatters, there's no oil burns. Um, 
Of course, using the steak and co-bacon here makes it easier. Um, in this case, whenever we order from Gamey, um, you know, it's just, it's super easy to order from her. We message her on Instagram and we sent, she sends everything over, uh, you know, whether it's steaks that we have for Sunday or Saturday on the weekend, um, but even the sausages, uh, the pork steaks, I really enjoy. And of course the bacon. So we glazed everything and you could see how it's kind of sizzling when it still comes out. <laughs> super yummy if you let it sit and then you let it cool completely the bacon actually stands up it becomes stiff because it has all the sugar and the pineapple and everything all that it like sat there and baked in um and it just was so yummy i will be honest this first tray did not make it out of the kitchen <laughs> all of the kids came in when they smelled it and they were like what's done we want to smell that what we want to eat that we smell it all the way from the other room um, even the, this is the pork steak that I really enjoy. She also has steaks, salmon, frozen salmon, Norwegian salmon. And of course, um, we know that the pork goes excellent with the rum. And that's even what we're going to be tasting in a little while. Have you guys ever glazed bacon before? <laughs> no? Not yet. I have yeah. not. It's, it's super yum. And the barbecue sauce actually that we made with the mascara blend, um, it could go on fish, it could go on pork. I actually made a lechon koale as well with a slab um, from Gamey from Steak and Co. And it was just as yummy. Threw it in the air fryer. It was so good. Um, but bacon is like a new thing for us. We're trying all different kinds of things with bacon. And it was perfect with the, the pineapple rum glaze. So I think it would even be good on a ham, like the holidays are coming. I think that would be good too. So before we get to the first food and food tasting and pairing, which Aaron will walk us through, um, we have food uh, lechon belly that was sent over from Lampara that he will walk us through tasting with one of the rums. Um, but before we do that, are you guys ready for a quiz the cook? I see you guys. Some of you are really being, you're so patient. Joanne R. Ramos says she loves Don Papa. Mark Ibo says yum. Um, Armando Mancho Miano Jr. says yummy. Okay, yes, Jing, you agree. That barbecue sauce and that glaze, it would be a great, great ham glaze. I think it might even be good on poultry. Okay, so we're ready. Angelica's ready. Sol is ready. Remember that you must share the live stream if you'd like to be eligible to win the giveaways. Of course, the giveaways that we have coming to you are two bottles of Don Papa, one mascara blend, one seven-year blend. We also have honey cured bacon, Hungarian sausage, Brazilian ribeye, all from Steak & Co. You'll have a boozy Sunday kit from Tipsy Cream with some plant-based ice cream and their rum raisins, brandy bar nuts, whiskey granola, bourbon molasses, and of course, whiskey fudge, whiskey fudge, sorry. And then a bar jigger from Barsmith for when you want to make your mixed drinks that Kath will be showing us later. So remember, you must share. This is the first quiz the cook question. So the first person to answer correctly will win. And um, here we go with the first question, what is the nickname given to Negros Island, which is the home of Don Papa? Aaron and I mentioned it earlier very quickly. Um, so if you were paying attention, Jing, is the cute glass included? I think it is. Did we say that, was it included? No, it wasn't included. I'm sorry, Jing. I don't think the cute glass is included. Aaron, did we say that was included for the winners? I'll see, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I, think we, I think we should be able to find a couple glasses. Wow, good answer. Winners. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. No promises, no promises, Jing, but Aaron will see. Maybe he can make some magic. Okay, I think we have a winner. Um, remember, this is the first question, so the first person to answer correctly wins. 
for the second question, remember it's one, four, three, four, four. So if you're, if you are of the certain age that you would know what that means, <laughs> question number one is the first winner. And we will just confirm because I see that a lot of people have answered correctly. So we will ask our social media team while they are confirming the winner. Um, we can start talking about Lampara, uh, the main dish, Erin. Of course, we know it's critical to know. Well, it's critical, but not so much, right? We want to know what go, what food goes with what rum. And of course, we know that our friends over at Lampara have given us a deep fried rolled pork belly seasoned with lemongrass and garlic. And this is served with a sweet soy anise sauce and topped, of course, with some pork floss. So pork on pork on pork. We love it. Um, how are we going to taste this and what are we going to pair it with? Um, so we're going to pair this one with our Don Papa Mascara, which was one of our newer expressions actually launched back in 2018. And for us, this is a little bit different style of rum. This is our premium infused rum. So what we've done with this particular expression is we've infused it with three local ingredients to really make the flavors pop for this particular rum. So the three local ingredients, we've got uh, a local honey, we've got calamansi and some ceiling labuyo as well. So it makes quite an interesting expression, super sort of approachable for new rum drinkers. And in my mind, as you mentioned, pork on pork on pork for the dish from Lampara. Um, it sort of pairs perfectly with that, uh, the rich flavors of the pork belly and the pork floss, along with that soy anise sauce, sort of balances with the, with the lightness of this rum, with some of those honey notes as well, but uh, also complements each other with the lemongrass and then the calamansi flavors from the, uh, from the rum as well. So it's a great little pairing, this one here. Okay, so should we taste the food and then the rum or should we taste the rum first? I think let's have a little taste of the rum to begin with so we can okay. sort of see what the flavors of the of the mascara are. Um, I've just poured a little bit into my glass. Uh, sort of have a look. Yeah, so I mean, I, I saw you guys with your whiskey tasting as well. You sort of went through the steps, looking at the color of this liquid, looking at the smell, the tastes. Um, what we have here, it's a little bit lighter on the profile, on the appearance. Okay, hold on. Before we talk about the color, we can announce the yep. winner. It's confirmed. Mm -hmm. Benson M. Pangilinan, you have answered correctly with Sugarlandia. Well done. Congratulations. Be sure to answer the Rappler team when they message you so that you can give your address and um, your contact information for us to get your prizes to you. Okay, so we're looking at color. So this one is a little bit lighter in color compared to the Dom Papa that we'll try afterwards. So this is aged for a little bit less time, uh, but because of that infusion, you still really get those wonderful flavors coming across. So as you do have that little smell, yeah, you'll find this wonderful honey notes through there. You'll find a little bit of the calamansi as well. So these sort of nice little citrus notes. Mm -hmm. You don't find too much of the ceiling la bouillon. No. But when you, when you have that sip, so I like to sort of have two sips, one to just warm up the palate and then a second to really discover the notes. On that second sip, it sort of changes the order. You get a little bit of that sour calamansi to begin with, then that sort of nice sweetness from the honey. And then towards the finish there, you get that slight spice from the ceiling la bouillon. Just a little. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Pairing it with our lovely pork mm -hmm. belly, pork floss, rice. Okay. And then we can take a little bit of the sauce too, right? Yeah. I've actually got quite a feed on today. This is going to be a lot of fun. I love the crunchy part. <laughs> Yum. Mm. It complements it so well. Agree. 
I even taste a little bit of the anise, no? It's nice. I want to take another sip. It really does go well together. And I'm all about texture too. So of course I had to have a little bite with the crispy skin. Super yum. <laughs> that was delicious. Um, this is uh, for me, pork, rum, and even the, the glaze that, that chef um, put with it, with the sweet soy anise. I bet we could even mix the soy sauce into the barbecue sauce as well if we wanted to give it like a little bit of an Asian an Asian feel. I think it would be good. Um, Kath, you also came up with, before we go, before Kath tells us about what she made with the mascara blend, um, I know, Erin, we started talking about the distillation process, and I think we were just missing two more um, steps to that whole process. So I think we left off at the aged barrels, where we were talking about the barrel, the bourbon barrels, and the STR casks. So I think let's pick up from there first before Kath shows us her mixed drinks. Absolutely. So, yep, last two steps. Um, it's sort of after we after we age the the rum in the warehouse for its allotted time as i mentioned we've got the two different barrel styles so we have our master blender on negros who knows the best barrels to select how long they've been aging for where in the warehouse they've been aging and then they'll blend those together so blending blending is our sixth step um, to creating our rums and then very quickly, the last step as well is just bottling our rums and getting them ready to be packaged uh, and sent around the world. Right. So the blender has just a big a job as everybody else does. And I mean, if like if you think about how the blender brings everything together, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like they, they keep an eye on the barrels as they age as well. So they're trying it throughout that aging process. Uh, and, and seeing how it changes, whether it's a, a super rainy year or something like that, it would affect how the, the rum will age. So the wow. master blender is sort of uh, the, the brains uh, behind uh, the aging of the rums. Excellent. Great. Yep. So I love the different blends that we're trying here today. I will confess I've tried both of them quite a bit in the past, <laughs> in the past couple of in the past week at least so um i'm excited kath tell us about let's show your video and tell us about your mascara cooler okay well you know i came up with this um simple cocktail that anyone can recreate at home so it's you know you can it's really up to you how you want to make your cocktails at home it's about preference if you like it on the sweeter side or you like it a little bit stronger um, personally, I like my cocktails on the stronger side. Um, so here I'm adding about um, 30 ml of the mascara cooler. Just any large vessel you have at home. <laughs> so, and then I put some fresh calamansi juice and fresh really is important. I really believe fresh is best. And then now I'm adding some osmanthus syrup. And if you don't have that at home, that's totally fine. You don't have to add that. It's just my little twist to make it a little bit fancy. So okay. now I'm adding some ice. And uh, right here, I'm just squeezing the mint just to release its oils. You know, yes. that's already good enough for you to have the essence of the mint come out in your drink. And okay. now I'm adding some aloe vera juice, something light and refreshing. And now some soda water, just to dilute the sweetness a little bit of the juice and um, the rum. Now I'm giving a little stir and now it's ready to drink. That easy. You can find these ingredients in the, in the grocery, in the supermarket. You can enjoy your weekends by the pool. This or drink might be the kids a blow up pool. pool. Right, once the kids are all occupied. <laughs> Eva, this looks like it's my kind of drink. It looked light and um, it didn't look, you know, really heavy. I like that you added the, the bubbles, of course, and uh, juice. I know we were talking about aloe vera juice for a while. Even last episode, we were talking about um, I, yes. aloe vera juice, right? I, I was inspired by your last episode, you know, um, 
I love those Korean, uh, that Korean aloe vera juice from the supermarket. And I and thought- And they're so good for you. Yeah, and I thought it would just really go so well with the Sili Labuyo that's in the mascara Don Papa. So it will, that aloe vera, that cool, coolness that hits your tongue, just kind mm. of like uh, equals out the, the, the Sili Labuyo in the, in the rum. So refreshing, refreshing. Yes. B, is this a drink that you would like or would you prefer your rum on the rocks or straight or neat? Um, you know, to be honest, I drink my rum on the rocks and it reminds me of the beach. But when Kat <sighs> said that I can have it by the pool, by the kiddie pool, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm going to try that. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> yes, by the kiddie pool. <laughs> Plus one for that, I agree. Okay, so guys, this brings us to our next Quiz the Cook question. But before I read that, okay, let's say um, we have Lionel. Santos, Catherine, you nailed this drink invention. So you have a fan. I agree. I agree, <laughs> Lionel. I think she nailed it as well. Um, there are lots of island cocktail. I guess Sir Louis Frigilano. Um, he thinks that it's an island cocktail and looks yummy as well. Okay. So... Let's go. 100 points for Bianca, drinking it by the kiddie pool. <laughs> Lionel agrees. I think Lionel might be a parent also. Here is our next quiz, the cook question. Of course, up for grabs. You know we have Don Papa Rum in both the mascara um, blend and the, Don, the regular Don Papa seven-year blend. We have honey cured bacon, Hungarian sausage, and a Brazilian ribeye from Steak & Co. We also have a boozy Sunday kit from Tipsy Cream Manila, which we are going to share with you guys on cam. We're actually going to show you guys how to make this Sunday. So yummy. It has rum raisins, brandy bar nuts, whiskey granola, bourbon molasses, and whiskey fudge. And actually the folks over at Tipsy Cream came up with this Sunday kit just for our episode. So thanks guys. This is awesome that you guys did this with us. And we have a bar jigger from Bar Smith. So again, you have to remember, you have to be 18 and over. We forgot to mention that earlier. Um, and of course, you have to live in Metro Manila because the prizes, of course, are ice cream and meat and they are um, perishable. Okay. So remember, this is question number two. So it's one, four, three, four, four. Commenter number four with the correct answer will win. Make sure you share the live stream. And let's see, Kath, do you want to um, ask our quiz the cook question number two? Oh. Okay. So name the three local ingredients infused with Don Papa mascara. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. So while we wait for everyone to answer, because I know that those comments are going to come up very quickly. Um, and of course, we know we have, let's see, um, remember that it's number four, commenter number four with the correct answer will take home this prize. Okay. So three local ingredients we are going to use. Okay. Before we move on to the next pairing, I am actually going to show you. So we're going to make sure we get number four, comment or number four. So I think we can show the next video where um, I show you a recipe that my daughter came up with. So as you guys know, hashtag Team Jellybean loves to spend time in the kitchen. Before Kitchen 143, there was Team Jellybean. And what we do as our regular bonding um, experience is we cook together, we come up with recipes, we play with different things. And when Gia and I were talking about using rum in some of the recipes, I knew right away I wanted to make bacon. And she knew right away that she wanted to make a calamansi colada pie. So here is the recipe that she came up with. And of course, she is also the hand model in this cooking up the recipe here, baking it up in our home kitchen. Um, and I will walk you through it. Um, of course, you guys know, as always, the recipes will be featured on my Thursday column, both the drinks that Kat came up 
with and the recipes that Gia and I shared. Here we have butter. She's melting the butter because she's going to make the graham cracker crust with the desiccated coconut. So there's the colada flavor there, putting the coconut into the graham cracker crust, which of course is always good with any kind of citrus pie. Um, she puts this in the oven and of course par bakes it first before she makes the, the calamansi custard, which will be poured in. Always easier to use like a glass or, <clears throat> excuse me, a glass or a measuring cup to like press it down so it's nice and firm. Um, for this recipe, for the custard, we just use the yolks. So um, she's separating the yolks here. Uh, cream of tartar, which will help in creating the custard. Whisking that together and then adding one can of condensed milk with um, some of the uh, the shavings, the calamansi shavings, and um, some of the calamansi fresh squeezed, again, fresh is best, like Kat said, fresh squeezed calamansi juice. Pour that in, bake it. The recipe that we looked for inspiration from, we combined a couple of different recipes for this called for 15 minutes. I think you call for about, we baked it for about 20 to 30 minutes instead. And here's the cream. We used fresh whipping cream, the seven year rum mixed into this. Um, we added less sugar because the rum also has a, a little bit of sweetness. So we, we decreased the sugar there. Um, and then added, of course, uh, a little bit of uh, rind as well on top. So shavings served perfectly with uh the seven year and yes she's old enough to drink don't worry she's 22. <laughs> she's 22 and she enjoyed having a drink with us as well as coming in the kitchen and creating something as well so rum really inspired all of us actually there were a couple of different recipes we wanted to come up with and this don papa actually lent itself to so many different ways we could get creative in the kitchen um so i think we are ready to announce the winner i see it looks like, okay, Mark Simon Ting, congratulations. You answered correctly with calamansi, sealing labuyo, and honey, of course. Congratulations. Make sure that you um, give your information to the Rappler team who will be contacting you. So congratulations, Mark. All right. So, Aaron, are you ready to lead us through the next pairing? I think Absolutely. the chef um Lampara sent over um let's see he didn't send over banana turon this is more of this is something else right <laughs> or is this it's charred it's a fancy turon which is charred banana custard with dark chocolate jackfruit and a sea twill okay so what will we be pairing this with so we'll be pairing this with the rum that started it all for us, the Don Papa 7. Um, launched back, yeah, just about 10 years ago now in 2012. So you can see from this particular expression, the color is a little bit a little bit darker than with the mascara. Uh, mm -hmm. this, is, this is due to that aging process that I mentioned through the distillation there and just that uh, angel share and time spent in the barrel really sort of adds to this color of the rum itself. Right. Um, on the nose there, you'll, you will find, like you've been mentioning, uh, like that smells of vanilla, smells of caramel, sort of these rich, uh, sweeter smells. In the background as well, I do find a little bit of sort of fresh, like pineapples, sort of these fruity Ooh. notes as well. Okay. I always get the, 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 the oak from the, the, the oak barrels that they were aged in. I always taste it in the middle part of my tongue. So it's definitely yep. there. So yeah, on the palate there, you do get those sort of sweet notes to begin with. Then as Kat's mm. saying, you get some of that oak. Um, yes. But then 
you also find some sort of almost like candied fruits there, whether it's candied citrus, like some oranges or dalandan, sort of just sitting towards the back of the palate as well. I do, I do. So what I really like about this particular expression is it's it's quite uh, for for new rum drinkers to try this they'll they'll often be surprised and say wait why isn't it super strong why isn't it like oh my god I I have such a a bad impression when it came to rums I had this one experience or whatever but with Dom Papa it is this really great expression that you can drink it neat or on the rocks you can have it in yes. cocktails um, it's very approachable um, and. That's sort of something that I've always been fascinated with and super proud for the brand to uh, to have as well. It's so smooth, actually, yeah. that you really can drink it that way. Neat like I that. Have to, I have to agree with Aaron. Once you try Don Papa Seven, you will just you will start to become a rum lover. You mm -hmm. will just appreciate I think so. It so yes. Yeah. It's I so think so. Yeah, and you're also supporting something that's that's local, and that it comes from, you know, Mount Panlaon from Bacolod. It's just so, even when I drink it, it, you're so proud to actually hold it in your hand and drink it. It's just such amazing quality rum. Super. Yeah. Well, I agree. Yeah, I that also, yeah, I wanted to also add that, you know, whenever my husband or my family and I go to the States, and of course, but we bring pasalubong from here to give to our loved ones there. Um, if it's a friend or we you know someone who loves to drink, we make we bring a bottle of Don Papa for them, and it's really always, always a welcome for a welcome gift. Talaga. It's really good. I mean, mm -hmm. it's something that we all should be proud of that it's from here, from the Philippines. Agree. We love our local. We love our Pinoy pride. Um, actually, Lionel Santos, who's very active on the chat, is also saying he likes to drink it with an espresso shot, ice cubes, Kahlua, and Don Papa. That sounds good. Okay. Yeah, with Kahlua, so the coffee. We better try. And the coffee. Coffee and coffee. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So I tried my banana. I tried it already. Did you guys try your dessert? I will I'll try again. another one. I'm about to. Mm. So when you guys want to go visit Lampara, um, aside from getting to taste these dishes, which are excellent, you will also, if you are one of the winners who have won already, or one of the three winners who are left, you'll also have um, a GC for two cocktails, two Don Papa cocktails that you'll get to enjoy when you go and visit. So you guys can try the rolled pork belly as well. And of course you can try a fancy take on banana turon and it's delicious. What did you guys think of pairing it with the seven year? It's really good. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. I have and no words. It's really, really good. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, having that, having that second sip, meal. it sort of just pops the Turon flavors, and you get these wonderful banana flavors through there, Ooh. and the chocolate yeah. as well. It's really, really good. So balanced. Even the jackfruit. No, mm -hmm. the little bites of jackfruit. Okay. So um, for. Don Papa, I know the seven year, you also created a drink for us for this, right, Cap? Correct. I did. Want to walk us through? Sure. So, you know, I am uh, I love everything retro. I just, so this is the inspiration for the next cocktail, which actually comes in a punch bowl. And uh, I thought that, Let's show you know, now that, Everyone is slowly getting vaccinated and the holidays are coming up, you know. Then I thought, why not make it into a bigger batch for your closest friends to enjoy? So, right. Super easy peasy, you know, sangria punch number seven. Uh, all these ingredients you can buy uh, from the grocery. So here I add about one cup, because I have a small punch bowl. Uh, actually half a okay. cup of Don Papa. And then 
Can I just say I there. love pumpkin spice? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're so fun. So, of course, with fresh lemon juice. Then I added some passion fruit juice. Honestly, you can add any kind of juice you want. Um, I just love the color of this one. This is the dragon fruit juice. It's just so pretty. You know, it's really like a conversational starter in any party. So, and then here I add some uh, mango wine, but you're free to, feel free to add some um, white wine. Um, as you can see, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, you know. As <laughs> then I add some ice. Add ice when your guests are already have arrived, right? So that you know, it gets cold and it doesn't dilute too much. Then I added right. just some three touches, some lemon rounds. Then I added some flowers from my garden just to make it look nice and tropical and pretty. And it's That's ready, so ready to enjoy. Perfect. Perfect. That looks delicious. And I would love to be celebrating or hanging out with some of my family and friends. I would serve that. The great thing about punch bowls is that you can fix it, forget it, and walk away. I love that saying, mm -hmm. fix it and forget it, right? Your guests can help themselves. You don't have to fuss over them and they can choose if they want to add more ice or even a little bit more rum if they mm -hmm. like, if that's their fancy. But we have a question for Aaron. Aaron, how can I get a hold of Don Papa Seven in Europe? He's in Belgium. Hi, Lionel. I'm so happy you're tuning in from Belgium. How awesome is this? I'm not exactly sure which which stores we're in, but we're available throughout Europe. Um, so, yeah, we've we're we're in Belgium. We're in Holland. Uh, so, I can find out, and I will definitely get back if they want to reach out to your team and pass forward on an email address. Sure, surely we can definitely do that. I noticed I was following the um, Don Papa Rum um, Instagram account. I noticed there was a big event in Germany recently. I think that was just like the other day. Um, I just started yesterday, I think, uh, but it goes for the, the rest of the week, I think. Uh, awesome. So, yeah. so that's for Oktoberfest, I'm going to assume. Everybody's hanging out. Pre, pre Oktoberfest, but this is sort of the, the spirits brands of the world all get together. It's like a, a Comic Con for spirits. Uh, it's mm -hmm. called the Berlin Bar Convent. And, um, okay. I'm sure that's a big event. And, uh, showcase new products and everything. So now that uh, life is sort of returning to normal in Europe, uh, yes. they, they get to all go <laughs> do that. And we get to sit over here and be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll return to normal for us soon too. <laughs> so that we can do this, not just in the comfort of our own phone, our own homes, but we could taste and enjoy this, this together. Um, so that brings us to our third quiz, the cook question. Guys, you know, so one, four, three, the third person to answer correctly with the right answer, right? Third person, one, four, three. Bianca, hopefully you can read this question for us. But before you read it, I will share with everyone what they're winning. Two, do two bottles of the Don Papa. So you will win the mascara blend and also the seven-year blend, which is really smooth. Um, honey cured bacon, Hungarian sausage, Brazilian ribeye from Steak & Co. Of course, a boozy Sunday kit from Tipsy Cream Manila that is specially formulated for us in this episode today. And a bar jigger from Bar Smith. Um, remember that you can be watching from Rappler and Mama and & Manila and make sure to share the live stream. Okay, so question number three. Bianca, let's... Game. Let them have it. All right. Here's trivia question number three. How is Don Papa Rum made? Enumerate the seven steps. All right. <laughs> okay, guys, that is really, um, if you were paying, ooh, someone answered very quickly. Guys, they were on top of this. I think they knew that we might ask this question. But before we, we'll let the team decide who is number three to answer correctly. One, four, three, correct? This is qu quiz the qu question number three. Dama. Okay, so um, before we do that, 
Um, we also have one of our partners for this episode before we announce, okay? Guys, keep answering. Let us know where you're signing in from. Of course, we want to see where you're coming from. And if you have any questions for Erin or Kath or, of course, Bianca and myself, just put them in the comment box. We will answer, of course. Um, one of our other partners for this episode is Tipsy Cream Manila. They are known for formulating boozy ice cream that is just as yummy as it is flavorful, right? That brings in the different liquors that we enjoy. So um, I think Kath also came up with um, a dessert here using the kit. Kath, do you want to tell us about it? Oh, sure. It's uh, the Don's Naughty Palikau. So, Tipsy Cream had sent over some coconut plant-based ice cream, and instantly I thought of Palikau. And so I decided to put it into like, like an ice cream shake, and uh, I blended it all together. And uh, yum. Have the video okay so we, can, I we do before we roll the video let us announce the winner because that was quick number three answered quickly i guess everybody was on the edge of their seats knowing that we would probably <laughs> ask you guys about the distilling process i think you're on to us okay um number three the winner is ashley go make sure that okay she answered correctly oh. harvesting milling fermenting distilling aging blending bottling that's right. And congratulations, Ashley. You have won lots of yummies. And of course, some Don Papa rum for you to make your own drinks, barbecue sauce, and whatever it else, whatever else it is that you would like to make at home. And um, even some steak and go products. Okay, so let's roll the video um, with the Don's Naughty Pali Tau dessert. Yes. So um, I have my handy dandy blender and I added some Don Papa rum, the seven year old. And uh, Your bottle is well loved there. It looks like a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, and then I added um, the coconut plant based ice cream from Tipsy Cream. And I tell you, it's so delicious. It's it complements Don Papa so well. And then um, I added some toasted sesame seeds. Ooh. And then I added some ube condensed milk that was also from the grocery. So it's ube condensed milk. I added some ice just to dilute it a little bit. Um, you can add some milk if you like it, a little bit more runny, but I like it really thick. And so just blended it up here. You get that really pretty ube color. And I, I could already smell it through the blender, the Don Papa. It made me so excited. <laughs> so yeah, just get any glass you like, a pretty straw. And, and here I added some of uh, Tootsie Cream's uh, brandy nuts on top mm. of the drink. Just to add a little crunch in my my yeah. dessert. So, so there you go. It looks yummy. And so that's what actually the um the whole kit comes with a bunch of toppings. We'll walk you through those toppings because we're gonna get to taste them as well. Um, it looks like we have um everybody's very excited <laughs> for our prizes here. <laughs> um <laughs> That dessert looks yummy. It, it looks like you could even eat it with a spoon, which is why it's a naughty dessert, right? With the... I, I have to say that I, I shot it early in the morning and I was like, mm, I should save this for later. So <laughs> I actually poured it back into the container. Then I put it in the freezer and then I enjoyed it that evening. It was so good while watching Netflix. 
perfect. Well, it's five <laughs> thirsty somewhere, right? So it totally, if we were together, I would have been the bad influence and said, it's okay, you can have it. Especially since, what was it, Saturday? Was it a Saturday morning? Saturday, it's the weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's the weekend. So, okay, good stuff. That looked delicious. And of course, we have our um, partner, Tipsy Cream, to thank for sending over that boozy Sunday kit with the plant based ice cream that just inspired Kath to make that naughty palitao dessert. Um, okay, speaking of the naughty palitao dessert, we have this is quiz the cook question number four. Okay, remember one, four, three, four, four. This is for the fourth person who will answer correctly if you have shared the live stream, if you live in Metro Manila, and if you are 18 years and older. Of course, guys, we need you to be 18 years and older because we have alcohol as our prizes. Up for grabs, we have two bottles of Don Papa, both the mascara blend and the seven year blend. We also have honey cured bacon, Hungarian sausage, and a ribeye steak from Steak & Co. Our boozy Sunday kit from Tipsy Cream Manila that of course includes our rum raisins and more, and a bar jigger from Bar Smith. So guys, remember, share. Sharing is caring, and if you would like to receive your kit, answer, be the fourth person to answer correctly. Aaron, could you read us number, quiz the quick, Quiz the cook question number four, please. Okay. Name the influential figure who inspired Don Papa's character as seen on our rum bottles. This was so interesting. Um, it's just, I love the history and going down the rabbit hole with all of the guests who have come and taught us so much about the different things that we like to love. Um, while we're doing this, guys, I will ask you if you would like to um, go ahead and bring out your boozy ice cream, we can make our um, our Sunday, right? So um, while everybody's figuring out who the, who the influential figure is, answering number four, right? What is the cook question number four? We want to make sure that we are ready. So I am actually opening up all of my jars that we received from Tipsy Manila, we are going to share this. So um, Bianca and Kath and Aaron, if you have your ice cream sets out, you can go ahead and start your toppings. So for me, um, there is a whiskey hot fudge and there is also a bourbon molasses, right? Um, well, it's not hot fudge because it's not hot, but it's whiskey fudge. Uh, bourbon molasses, and then we have, of course, the rum raisins, right? So we have all of these fun toppings from Tipsy Cream. You guys are going to get uh, your own kit delivered to your home from the folks over at Tip Tipsy Cream, which, of course, we want to make sure that you can receive it while it's still frozen. So make sure that you are our winners are in Metro Manila, so we're gonna put some rum raisins in there, and we are we have some. Let me see if this is this is the fudge. So we have some whiskey fudge, which I'm gonna put on top of mine. I love ice cream with fudge, even if ice cream doesn't like me. But because this is plant based, I am in the clear. And then we have bourbon molasses which um, molasses, of course, is very important in this process also, right, Erin? We were talking about the sugar cane and the molasses. How, yeah. how well That's thought amazing. out is this kit? It looks amazing. And it also Are you guys putting well. all of your toppings? It smells amazing. Right? Okay, and then we have some beer nuts. So if you guys like nuts on top of your Sundays, I'm gonna just put a few. And there's even some whiskey, uh, let me see, whiskey granola. So I'm all about, we're talking about texture, right? 
So yes. we have some granola, some fudge, and then I am. I am going to put this here so you guys can see. I'm ready to taste mine. Are you ready to taste yours? I'm eating mine already, Mitch. <laughs> oh, you are? Okay. <laughs> Speed up. I have no control. Well, you can... to... I'm sorry. To sweets. <laughs> this is so perfect. I also want to take a picture of it, though. It's so perfect. It's like the perfect size. Yeah, actually, I'm taking a photo. It's pretty. Mm. 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 The coconut ice cream. It's creamy. Mm. Mm. And the fudge. Oh, I tasted the. I just got a bite of the molasses. What a fun treat and a fun way to mix in our rum with the rum raisins and then even some other boozy treats like whiskey and bourbon, um, all in a plant-based ice cream. It's as if the folks over at Tipsy Cream knew that I would enjoy it more if it was plant-based. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, guys. Everyone will love this. I'm going to put it back over here because I do think we have a winner for our last, our fourth question that we just asked. Um, for quiz the, cook, quiz the Cook question number four, the person who answered correctly was Chris V. Marie. There you go. You answered correctly with Papa Isio. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Well done. While we are enjoying our ice cream, of course. So we have seen how rum has inspired um, both, well, Kath, and of course can inspire you, not just in making mixed drinks, but also in the kitchen, creating desserts, um, creating barbecue sauce. Of course, it's a versatile ingredient that's proudly Pinoy. We are so proud of our Don Papa rum. Um, and using it here in the kitchen and sharing it with you, learning about the distilling process from Erin, of course, and chatting with Bianca about how she enjoys her rum, as well with um, Raul, of course, has been so much fun. But the fun is not over, guys. We still have one more question. Of course, you know, Quiz the Cook, we do five questions here where you guys have five opportunities to win. And of course, here we go. You know that up for grabs, of course, is Don Papa, um, Steak and Co, um, Tipsy Cream, and of course, Bar, uh, bar Jigger, of course, from Barsmith. All of these things will help you enjoy your Don Papa at home. So I will ask the last question. Here we go. How many creatures are rumored to be found on the Don Papa bottle? So while we are um, waiting for everyone to answer, guys, you can shop for Don Papa on boozy.ph where you will get 10% off any regular price bottle all the way through to the end of the year. And of course, if you would also like to try out Tipsy Cream, they have a special going on that if you would like to get your own kit, you can get 10% off today. Of course, all you have to do is um, log on to tipsycreammanila.com and use the discount Sunday Best. Sunday ice cream Sunday, guys. Okay, so be sure to use that discount. I see lots of answers, but I do not see, let's see, I do not see, I think I do. I think we have. Okay, um, let's see, do we have a winner? We do. Congratulations, Richard Vergara. You have won the fifth Quiz the Cook question. You will get your own Don Papa kit, ice cream, Sunday kit, steak and co. 
um, meats, and of course, a bar jigger from Bar Smith. Guys, it has been so much fun hanging out and learning more about rum. If you have any other questions, um, um, please let us know. Um, we are always available, of course, to answer questions. So before we go, let's start with Erin. Erin, where can our viewers find you? And if you have any parting thoughts, words, or anything about the brand um, that you would like everyone to know. Um. Well, I just want to say, yeah, thank you for, for having me this afternoon, this evening. It's been a pleasure to be here with you, uh, trying all this fantastic food and sort of exploring two of our Don Papas. Um, if people are interested in finding me, uh, I believe I've been tagged in, in a lot of your posts over the last few days as well. So I'm on Instagram or sometimes on Facebook. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, if people would like to have a look for the rest of, as you mentioned before, we're on boozy.ph, uh, where we've got that 10% discount for the rest of the year if you use the code Sugarlandia. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's been wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing so much about the rum, about the process, about the history, um, of course, and for joining us today on CAM. Kath! If everyone would like to have some more mixed drinks and learn more about how they can use some of the products in making some drinks at home, how else can the viewers find you and what you're up to now? Um, I'm very, very active on, um, on Instagram. So anything that's drink related or event related uh, in terms of mixology and spirits, uh, you can just go to um, my IG handle is at Kath Eckstein. The spelling is right there below. <laughs> In case you can't spell Eckstein, it's quite hard. But um, yeah, that's where you can find me. And uh, yes, as Aaron said, I've been tagged a few times as well in um, your your posts. So thank you for that. And Aaron, thank you for bringing you know the Lampara food to our home and our homes. And Michelle, thank you for you know, all this fantastic food. It's its such a treat, especially here in the pandemic, to enjoy amazing quality food at home and enjoy drinking with you guys. It's been so much fun. So thank you so much. Thank you. Do you want to tell us something about Barsmith as well? Oh, yes. yes. So uh, Barsmith, they, they're so amazing. So they are they are a local online supply good store that provides high-end tools and also affordable tools if you want to um, you want to try bartending at home but you're a little bit too intimidated or you don't want to spend too much they have very affordable kits they have affordable jiggers um, I have one it's fantastic it's my favorite it has skulls on it you know they have Perfect gold. Halloween. yes so you know I, I love their I love their tools uh, you can find them at Barsmith PH on IG and as well on Facebook. So thank you, Barsmith, for your Jigger giveaways today as well. Awesome. And of course, all of our partners are also on Instagram. We have Steak & Co, Tipsy Cream, MNL, Barsmith, and of course, Don Papa Rum. Right, guys? Okay. Lampara, I hope we can come and see you soon. That way, that way we can enjoy when things are better and we can go out and enjoy a nice dinner and, of course, a nice drink. Bianca, where can everyone find you? Yes, um, yeah, just the same as everyone. I am on Instagram. If you can and want to connect with me, I am Bianca S. Santiago on Instagram. And, yeah, you know, just this whole thing, this whole, this, um, first of all, thank you so much, Mish, for having me here. This gave me an idea, you know, like being moms at home, um, taking care of our kids, and, you know, everything's revolving based at home right now. It gave me an idea that if you want to meet up with your girlfriends or your family members and have, like, a, a quick get-together or, you know, celebrate, you can message Erin <laughs> yeah, and Kat for, you know, a, 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 what's this, a, one afternoon or one one evening of a mixology event about all you girls together that would be so much fun so yeah thank you so much i this is this is wonderful i mean i worked out earlier today and it was just pretty crazy and i was just treated it feels like mother's day so thank you so much oh. 
<laughs> you for good Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, my friend. We <laughs> could spend time together. I love it. Thank you so much, all three of you, for joining me here in the kitchen as we share some kitchen love with all of our viewers. Guys, tune in in two weeks' time where we will come together with some of my other friends and we'll talk about some simple Halloween celebrations that we can do at home for the kids and, of course, for the adults as well. So thanks for tuning in and we will see you in two weeks. Cheers. <laughs>